I don't know why I said first. Welcome to the final Beastly Thoughts show, everyone, before E3. How is everyone doing this week, guys? Welcome to the show. <laughs> the, the the final, what the hell? Oh, what I was the like, hell? shit. You just, <laughs> you just retired us all for no, no, no reason. No, 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 that's not what I meant. Uh, anyways, guys, this is going to be the final Beastly Thoughts show before E3. We were all very excited for it. Uh, we got a lot of great news to talk about this week. Thank you all so much for joining us, everyone. I uh, hope you're doing well. We're going to be talking about some leaks. We're going to be talking about a lot of different news. First of all, though, let's get it off with our co-host, Beastly Gamer and Not Too Nerdy. Guys, how are you doing this week? It is awesome to see you. Doing fantastic, man. My uncle, uh, he just got in from Ohio. He's hanging out with me. Uh, he's going to be spending his vacation about three weeks here in Georgia. Uh, he's full of energy, man. I've never seen a 65-year-old as active as this guy. He did 400 push-ups this morning. Uh, and by the time I Wait, got what? up, I came to yeah. 400 push-ups? No yeah, way. I walked, into, I walked into the... Yeah, he got me to, on the ground last night with him before I went to sleep, you know, to do 50 real quick, a set of 50. Uh, he got out this morning. He told me he was going to go hang out in the backyard. I was like, okay, hang out in the backyard. Then he called me about 15 minutes later and told me he was two miles down the road. <laughs> it's going to be an exciting couple oh, of wow. weeks. Uh, so shout out to my Uncle Ed. Uh, I've been playing a little bit of Destiny this week. Yeah, it's Surprise, surprise, right? I've mm, been wanting to yeah. com complete uh, some of the activities in Destiny and, and get my character stronger. And I found out just how weak I actually am, guys, because Kate and I... We can't complete any of the heroic strikes, no matter who we're with. We just, oh yeah, we're so, we're so sad. So I, I caved and I bought Modern War. I mean, uh, Call of Duty World War Two last night. Mm. Hopefully that'll make me feel better about sucking in Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe it's, not. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, man, I'm super excited to see you guys. Man, it's been ah oh, six days. It's always tough to go without Beastly Thoughts for that long. It hurts, man. Emotionally. Yeah. We're all here together again. Yeah, this is beautiful. <laughs> Not too nerdy. What's up, baby? How you feeling this week, man? I know uh, you just left the gym. Yeah, like, so here's the thing, right? It kind of sucks because, like, of course, I, I do work out a lot and stuff. So, mm -hmm. but when I try not to work out, I mean, most people in you know today rely on internet. But they were fixing something across the street for me, so I had no internet for two days. That's that's like a lifetime, two whole days. So I'm like, man, what can I play? What can I do in two days? I decided to do Metal Gear Solid One hey, and Metal Gear Solid Two, and I beat both of them in two so, days. In two days. Damn. Oh, so I, oh I man. Stayed up and I beat. So like wow. I. It's it's like nostalgia. Metal Gear Solid One, it's easy for me because I just memorize like where to go for all that. But Metal Gear Solid Two, I haven't played for a while. And by the way, I clicked through the the cutscenes. Like I could <laughs> for I could I can't just stand, sit there through the whole cutscenes. But, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, dude, that, that was that, my that, joint. Oh my that, goodness! That, like, I love that song. It's too bad that they copyrighted that. I mean that that song was uh, copied off someone else. But besides that, it was amazing. Like. <laughs> Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, you I just, wish you just wrecked my teenage years. I didn't know that shit. Yeah. I didn't know that it was it was stolen from someone else. That's why they stopped using it. And number number three, and number four, they couldn't do it anymore. But uh, <laughs> Man, damn you, Konami. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I I learned that you know just mostly working out and stuff. But like, I'm gonna make a couple videos this weekend for throughout the week for throughout the week. So that's gonna be interesting. One of them is about Destiny Two, and mm, uh, yeah. yeah. My, my thoughts on that, and I, I'll let you guys know right now. I haven't done a rant video in like over a year, and it's gonna be a rant video. It's gonna it's gonna be pretty bad. I'm sorry to tell you guys, the oh. people that love Destiny, I, there's not all the Destiny game itself. Yeah. Destiny Two. I mean, uh, I, I don't know. Let Let's just say this, right? It's like, I, I feel like you remember the console launch. When the consoles came out, people were like, wait a second, the, the consoles before that had these certain features, you took it out, and then, like, you didn't have a launch. But now, now yeah. all of a sudden, that's like if the console, like, like Sony and Microsoft say, you know what, we're going to give you those features back that we, we took out, and we're going to charge you for it. We're, we're going we're gonna to charge <laughs> to get those features we originally took out, and we're going to give it right back to you, and, and that's it. Like, that's how I feel about Destiny. I'll explain that in more detail. Watch, you know, watch my video. So. Yeah, yeah I, I kind of right got on. a hint when you told me on Twitter hey, that had some thoughts, and, and, and it might <laughs> yeah. break our hearts to hear. I can't wait to hear it, man. Uh, you know what? One thing I respect is honesty. You know, I'm not super anal about the game. I don't even know, you know, a lot of the things that people are really upset about. 
but that aspect of it I do completely understand to release a, a sequel to a product that's a shell of the original yeah, and then slowly exactly. start to reintroduce the same aspect that you had in the original. <laughs> and then also make people pay to get the better version <laughs> of the game as well. You know, we have to buy all this DLC, all these expansions, and it's like, how much are we spending at the end of the day to get a quality game, like a well, good wait, game? If you, if you no. bought the last DLC, no, that was season one DLC. That, that's a different, we that's got a plenty more DLC. coming for you, yeah. <laughs> This is the DLC for the expansion. Yeah. I mean, what are you guys thinking? You're going to get the same DLC. Well, come on, man. <laughs> well, I mean, all yeah. bad news aside, it's a great season right now to be a gamer. Okay. E3 yeah. is upon us. Uh, today, uh, EA's e E3 conference is going on. Mm -hmm. Right now, uh, so, actually, yeah. Yeah, so th there's going to be a lot, a lot of news going on there. You know, I'm not the biggest EA fan, haven't been for a long time, but I'm sure they... They probably got some earth-shattering news, probably a lot of sports talk, too. So if anything really big happens during Beastly Thoughts, you guys let us know in the comments. We'll check it out and we'll discuss. But in the meantime, we got a lot of stuff to go over. Of course, Robbie, you know, he's the third wheel of the tricycle, gets mm -hmm. all the information together for us for these, these great shows, and he's got us set up. So we're going to get into it. Capcom has registered a new domain name for Devil May Cry 5 right before E3, suggesting an announcement for the game is imminent. Probably Excited. pretty likely. Yeah, yeah. Going to be very cool to see what they do with that. Um, it's been how long has it been since the last game before DMC? When was before the last DMC? one? Before DMC? Yeah, uh, that was uh, eight, nine years ago. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah. DMC so it's definitely four, time. Uh, yeah, because actually, uh, I used to play that with Kate when I first met her. So yeah, it may have been longer than that. It may have been like two thousand and seven. Jeez. The thing that's weird is they talked about this rumor about this last year. You know, what I mean, like there's rumors that Devil May Cry Five was gonna come out last E3. I remember that. that. That's yeah, why yeah. I, I can't believe like it's just weird. And now all of a sudden, now it seems like it's coming to fruition. Like now, but like it seemed like last year people were talking about that. So I'm like, I'm mm -hmm. hoping that it's the truth because I was excited last year thinking that was gonna happen. It didn't happen. Well, for, for me, <laughs> yeah, see, yeah. for me, uh, I, I was around, of course, when the original DMCs came out, Devil May Cry, before it became DMC. And Dante, for me, was one of the most amazing type of characters. He he did things that like Bayonetta kind of copied and just he was so yeah. precise and just incredible. And for me, I, I want to see how they're going to take that to the next level. Because it's been almost a decade since that the chronology has continued. Of course, it did kind of the reboot thing. Yeah, it's been a long time. Well. So I'm really, I'm super excited to see what they do. I want to see what, how far they've gone as far as the technology. I want to see how, yeah, I don't want any more Nero. A lot of people really like Nero and Devil May Cry 4. I thought he was a really cheap substitute for Dante. I want Dante, maybe old Dante. Maybe they can go Logan style. Like Which Marvel haircut did. though? The emo one, the new emo one, or the old, the old white one? Old <laughs> white one would be better. Yeah, I don't yeah. I want to see an old emo. That doesn't make any. It's Nazi moron. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you know, it's like a sixty-year-old in goth. It just doesn't work. But uh, for me, I'd like to see you know what's going on with this character, how he's progressed. I would love, like I said, you guys saw the Logan movie. I'd like to see how he would you know act as he's at least looking older because we know that. He's not a human being, and he probably yeah, will never yeah. die. So I don't know which direction they're going to go, but mm -hmm. it's really exciting to see it. I mean, I'll, I'll definitely end up buying this game. And this is something that's not even in the news, but, uh, you know, I was watching the trailers last night with Kate. Have you guys seen the trailers for Overkill's The Walking Dead? No. Did that just come out? No. No, it's not out. It's, uh, no, I mean the trailers, though. That the trailers, went... one trailer's been out for a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. uh, and they talked about it. You know, they actually talked about it at E3 2015. But the trailers that are out now, my God, oh my God, it's, oh, that is a game right there. I just have to see what it's all about. It looks like it's going to be a third-person survival game, but shit, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Kirkman comics. I love The Walking Dead. The TV series kind of jumped the shark for me a little bit, but uh, this looks like it's visceral and violent and horrifying, mm -hmm. and it looks like it has truly captured the, the essence of the comic books. You guys watch those trailers. Let us know in the comments if you've seen overkills the walking dead games trailers because uh there are certain characters and it looks like each character has a pivotal part of the story they're introducing characters and it's showing you how they got to this point in this dystopian future yeah and what they used to do how their lives used to be and what they're like now and it just oh kate didn't see it before i'd seen it probably a few weeks ago mm -hmm. and just looking at that i was like god i have to have this game i'm a huge zombie fan Go George Romero. I know you're in heaven. Yeah, and it's a great developer working on it. Uh, uh, Overkill, who made um, uh, the Payday games. Sorry, my mind's blanking out. Uh, they're a great team, though. This could be a really cool game, and yeah, it does look cool from what they've shown before. So we'll definitely probably see more of that at E3, maybe? I mean, we don't know when it's really coming out. So that'll be dope, though. That'll be really, really cool. 
All right. Okay. So the next little bit of news, Xbox is having a massive E3 week sale going on right now, including price cuts to every Xbox One X and S model, 50% off Xbox Game Pass for six months, and up to 75% off select titles and more. The sale lasts through June, from June 7th through the 23rd. That's a, whew, that's pretty exciting. Yeah, that's a lot of good deals if you're an Xbox I gamer. I saw that Game Pass deal. You know, for me, that's probably the best thing going for Xbox. Yeah. You know, if you're new to the gaming, you know, ecosystem, if you're, you know, getting something for your birthday and you want an Xbox and you want to, you know, have access to tons of games, that Game Pass is worth its weight. Yeah, Game Pass, with. absolutely well, best service on that console. I like the fact that they sell Game Pass cards, though, so you don't have to give your credit card and you forget to, you know, cancel and then they charge you. I think that's right. the best part yeah, about yeah. it, that they didn't try to screw you over to actually... Lenny, you use a Game Pass card, and once it expires, it expires. Like, that, that's good. That's optional, but it's the same thing with PlayStation, because I yeah. pay for mm -hmm. Game Pass uh, with my credit card, and it automatically redu deducts straight from my bank account. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of the same way with PlayStation, because you can buy PSN cards as well. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, I didn't know if they'll go that route for Game Pass, because I thought though that's the trick. They're trying to get people to, act, you know, subscribe like that but it's good that they're not doing that they're actually it is consumer friendly in the sense you could buy a card just use it when it expires expires and right now for for six months thirty dollars like you can't really beat that like that's that's pretty that's pretty good now yeah. do you guys know if if you get game pass and you don't have xbox uh, games with gold or xbox live will game pass still work will you still be able to download your games and, and... through game pass yes they're both completely yeah. separate still yeah Okay, well, that sounds really good. I'd be interested to see uh, what, they're what they're selling the actual Xbox yeah. models for. One sec, guys, too. Uh, Science Sea Otter, we are officially live. Yeah, BC Thoughts has come back fairly recently. Uh, welcome. If you're an old viewer, we appreciate you being here. Thank you for tuning in. But, yes, this is actually live right now. And I uh, hope you were doing awesome. And thank you so much for tuning in. So, uh, yeah, sorry, guys, continue. Gracias, Sr. We just wanted to give a shout-out. Thank, thank you for joining us. I'm interested to see how much they're actually yeah. selling the hardware for. Uh, as someone who was on the fence and <laughs> smartly didn't purchase the Xbox One X because I probably wouldn't be playing it. Sure, yeah, just rub yeah. it in. Rub it in, Beasley. <laughs> rub it in. Come on, Hector. You knew what you were doing. <laughs> you gotta stick with PC, sure? dude, you know? You know? Yeah. Uh, for me, if they if they lowered the price to, you know, a, a, to a point that it was more, you know, reasonable for me to buy it, because right now my Xbox is... Really, I mean, to be totally honest, it's my Netflix, my YouTube box in my bedroom. Yeah, same. I love the way the controllers feel. You know, I'm thinking of buying the PlayStation Xbox style controllers because I just like the way the Xbox One's controllers feels. But when it comes to the games, it's just really not much for me to play. But if I had, you know, something I could play these games in 4K, I got two 4K TVs in here, I got HDR, you know, LG. It would probably look amazing, but I just can't justify spending 400 bucks on something I'm just not. Really yeah, and especially use. the price gap for like a 4K TV, right? With HDR, like if you really want to take full advantage of the console, especially if you already have an Xbox One S, like you really need to justify it with those extra things. So, I mean, yeah, it's nice that it's cheaper. That's really cool. They're doing a price drop, but it's still a lot of money. 449, you know, that's not cheap. It's still price 449. Yes, yeah, 449. So that's the yeah, price drop like, for the X. You said 400. I'm like, wait a second. That's that. That's it's still deal. 449. It was 500. Yeah, so no, like, it's 449 for the sale. <laughs> Beastly. What? Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm telling you. Like, it's I'm a lot of money. They, they dropped it to compete with PlayStation, but it's still 500 dollars regular MSRP. Yeah, and that's that's why it's dangerous because the PlayStation, is some like you get deals for three fifty right now. I think it's on eBay sale for the PS Pro is is three fifty. Yeah. So like you, that's why you look at that's three fifty, and they they drop that on purpose to compete with Xbox One X to undercut them again. Oh, yeah. oh man, they're just oh god, this is like the most sadistic game of chess ever, you know. Ah, oh, it's horrible, horrible news. <laughs> well, hopefully they do well. I'm sure there's tons of people with Xboxes who are gonna take advantage especially some of these the 75 percent off selected titles yeah yeah that's, that's really good there's a lot of good deals definitely take the time and look through them yeah all right so the next bit of news is actually kind of interesting because i did see a video on this asus has announced the company's first ever smartphone this week the republic of gaming phone which is built with gaming in mind to compete with the razor phone this is kind of uh amazing the new technology they've implemented in this phone you can actually connect a controller to it uh, it has a, a dedicated GPU. It has, uh, I'm trying to remember, I think it's, it has a liquid cooling system in the phone. Yeah. It does on the back, yeah. Like the back is bigger yeah. because it's got like a liquid um, cooler in it. This is 
pretty damn phenomenal. And it, there was a time where I would say, you know, I, I think it's cool that you can play PUBG on a phone and it looks like, you know, your Xbox. But the fact that they're implementing, uh, I, I think, common sense gaming laws into this thing, they're, they've had added the ability to attach a controller to it. Uh, they've got a dedicated graphics GPU inside of it. I think this is pretty damn, uh, this is groundbreaking when it comes to the mobile space. What do you guys think about it? It's, it's really cool. Awesome. I mean, it's got 8 gigs of RAM. It's even got like a 90 hertz refresh rate for a phone, which is like, yeah. that thing's going to be smooth swiping yeah. it. Like, yeah, that's that's incredibly I mean, cool. Is, is it going to be... Is it going to be in a reasonable price range? Because you know these uh, probably not. This, this Galaxy <laughs> no. S9 and the Nine Plus, is 750 and 850. Okay, these phones. Is it going to compete in that price range? Is it going to be the the iPhone uh, X See, price, a thousand dollar phone? What do they want? I here's the thing, right? Because uh, this is not the first phone. This is actually like the third or fourth phone gaming phone, right? Um, the first right. one that came out was 120 frames per second. The problem is they had issues with the, the camera. It had a whole bunch of issues, and like it, it wasn't what people expected, even though it's buttery smooth when you swipe left and right. It, it is amazing for 120 frames per second. So this one was 90 frames per second, right? But this one is also buttery smooth as well. And this one is really just the features of it. Like it just, It's just smart, and it's actually in mind for a gamer, right? It has the dual speakers up front. So right there, that's that's in mind for a gamer. You know that you're going to be facing, and most people are going to be playing, you know, on the side like this. Now, yeah. it also has um, an attachment. So when you're playing, it has an attachment on the back to keep it cool. So that actually has a fan, built-in fan inside of it. You can keep it cool. Um, and when it does this, here's the kicker. It has a headphone jack still, and it has a headphone jack and yeah, it has USB-C. And it has USB-C on the side of it as well. Yeah, for the top and the side. Yeah. So, so then you get yeah. One is for the um uh one's for the controller, correct? And one yeah. is for the charger. Mm. Correct. So they, they, and, they've future proofed the hell out of this thing. Now you did yeah. mention that the, the, the phones previously had issues with maybe a subpar camera quality and things of that nature. Has this been addressed with the new uh Republic of Gaming phone? Everyone's saying it does have dual camera, dual dual camera, so it is on board with everyone else that has dual. Um, it, it is at 12 megapixels, I believe. So that that's also in pretty much in line with other people. So um, I guess that's one of those ones that got to wait and see the quality of it itself. Um, that that's the thing people have not got a chance to really test out to see like w compare the picture quality yeah. with like the the Pixel 2, which obviously that's at the top with the, top S9, the, line, yeah. the S9 Plus and, and Pixel 2 are the, the two top right now for picture quality, and iPhone X is right behind them. So like those are the the three top ones. So is it gonna be? Don't as forget those? The, you know. Listen, man, I love you to death. Not too nerdy, but please yeah. don't forget the, the regular S9. <laughs> huh? Well, the reason why I say it, the S9 doesn't have the dual camera lens, so like that's I know. The it doesn't why. have the two cameras on the back. Yeah, but, but that's for uh, so it's automatically garbage. Picture. Yeah, Ooh, fuck. <laughs> um, you know, uh, the S9 is is a great, great. It's the best oh, yeah. phone I've ever had. It's virtually the same phone as the S9 yeah. Plus, minus the extra camera on the back, which is only used for one particular style of imagery. Mm. But um, it's it's a great phone. I just wanted to make sure my phone was mentioned. Hey, heavy metal mom. For, for all my dead homies heavy metal mama what's up what's up <laughs> yeah yeah so um this kind of you know and there was a time i would have said this wouldn't be possible this wouldn't work but you know when you when you add that controller it kind of turns your phone into a switch oh, the you thing know? is this right it's 2.9 gigahertz like speed wise like that that's insane right there for a phone the next thing's insane that is, is that for on the back of it, you could program, obviously, the lights because it has lights in the back of it, the RGB light. You could program the lights on the same spot to program the lights to what you want. You could actually increase the fan speed of the phone. So you get what? The you can overclock the phone? The phone? In the same, oh, like, my God. It, like, they let you overclock I did not the know phone. these things. <laughs> so these are things, and that we didn't even get into accessories. Like they're going to have a dock and safe with it sector. where it comes oh with a mouse and keyboard so you can play a mouse and keyboard. You, what? Yeah, they, that, this is, they have another accessory that makes it a dual screen where it comes and it looks sort of like the... So it looks like a 3DS style. I'm buying they this for a good phone, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. They have a whole bunch of accessories for this wow. phone. Like, that. that's, like, we just talked about the feature of the phone. Once you get to the accessories, that's a whole new level. Like, they future-proof the hell out of this because there's so many things you can't do with accessories. 
if you see the dual screen, the second screen it looks almost like it's a second phone. But like it, it literally, they did that so that you could have your map on the bottom. That you could do different things to make things. it into a 3DS. And it, it's just amazing, like the, the stuff the, they come up with. It's it's amazing, right? And I, I appreciate what Asus is doing, Razer's doing, as far as pushing the envelope with you know uh, hardware for for gaming yeah. on on the go. But my issue with this, and I believe it is an issue because of what we've seen across <clears throat> the landscape in the mobile gaming arena, is mobile development mobile developers aren't going to, i don't think maybe some will aren't going to focus on these high-end machines and create console quality type of experiences on the phone when they're usually focused on smaller scale uh across the board uh, yeah. mobile type of applications and games this phone it could bridge the gap between mobile play like typical uh, mm. phone games and what we see on things like uh, the switch what we see on consoles it, it'll, it'll have the graphical capability to do something similar i would surmise to the switch but getting these smaller developers to actually invest the time and the money into projects like that i think that'll be the issue until yeah. this kind of hardware becomes ubiquitous a across the uh, landscape of phones once you know samsung and apple start to integrate this type of technology in phones we're going to see developers say okay well now if i make this amazing game that's graphically superior to every other phone game it'll be out there and this will be like the the touchstone of, of change in the mobile space this will change the, the way people are looking at home consoles but you know i think it's a great step you know i i love asus i think that they're a great company to kind of push the envelope but at the same time when it comes to phones they're not big enough it would have to be See? you know to me it would have to be a samsung or an apple to push this envelope to kind of get these these developers to See? come behind them and, and kind of lead the charge. See, but I think this is big enough in the sense of push Samsung and uh, and Apple to do something, because here's the problem, right? That they're at the point now where there's not too much they could do different to their phones. Like, it, they're at the point where they have to find something different. If people are seeing that this is buttery smooth on Android, where you get 90 yeah. frames per second, and it's not just 90 frames per second. The reason why it's slower than the, the Razer phone the Razer phone is 120 frames per second. That's LCD. Screw that's like that's a different type. This is OLED. So this went back to OLED it's and it's 90 frames difference. per second in OLED. Yeah. And <laughs> like that, that's what's separating this right now. And like if Samsung and them sees that, they this is a way for them to upgrade and also that slight lag. And even though you don't have it now on the new phone, I don't have the the lag on the S9 Plus. I'm sure you don't have it either on the S9. It, you'll see how much buttery smooth it is at uh, 90 frames, 120 frames. It makes your operating system seem even faster than it really is. Oh, yeah. And I think that that's something that they could do to improve the quality because they're running out of things to improve it. How yeah, are they going to separate? I mean, look look yeah. at the difference between the, the, the S8 and the S9 and you know yeah. the, the, the iPhones that have been coming out over the last three or four years. It's been so you know small incrementations of change. People are, it's very hard for some people to see yeah. the difference. If you look at the S9 and the S8, the only difference is where the fingerprint scanner is. Uh, you know, so the side of the camera on the 8, and it's below the camera on the 9. And that's just, uh, you know, it's so few changes as far as integrate, I mean, as far as generations go, that yeah, you're right. This could actually wake up. And, and what is Samsung trying to do overall? They're trying to push the VR headset. They keep trying to do the VR headset every year, right? And if they keep yeah. increasing the frames per second, it's only going to prove that as well. And I think that's overall what they're trying to accomplish i think that's what's going to help them so this these gaming phones are going to push them to do things because now you're going to start getting these games onto these phones like uh, that's why you battlegrounds and you got um fortnite coming out when it comes out for android you're going to be getting these phones with these games that are there so another thing guys is there's give and take when it comes to the mobile arena right everybody well a lot of people have newer phones some people get a new phone every year. You know, whenever the, the new Apple comes out, the, I, the iPhone comes out, everybody's waiting in line. Those people are I've crazy. Never, <laughs> I've never done it. Uh, but, you know, it, it is a, a four, four, four Sorry. Sorry. Uh, what is Asus doing to kind of pull the attention away from these other huge phone companies to make people buy their product? Because if you buy maybe the Asus phone uh, and you, you have like a, an S9 or S9 Plus or an iPhone 10. What does it have besides maybe a higher uh, graphical frame rate? I think they're just going after completely different markets. They're just trying to get a mm -hmm. different market with this phone altogether than people who would just buy your average iPhone or Samsung or whatever. I think it's just different markets or different demographics that for make, who would make, buy that. Makes, that. Yeah. makes sense. 
That's a, that's a good answer. Because all they need to do is if they release this game and they release it and say, look how you can play Fortnite on it, it's a wrap. Like, like that's all you need. You need a game like that. And it'll show it'll that, run better hey, than it will on consoles, probably. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey. Like, hey, how, how are you doing here? Oh, really? Uh, When you, you start <clears throat> playing on the go, you go back home, put in your docking station, play with a mouse and keyboard. That, so, quick question. The docking station, will it connect to your TV or will it just be a mouse yeah, and keyboard? Yeah. Really? A mouse keyboard so, and, it and is it's like a switch. Sp- it has, if you see the, the ports on the back of it, it has, like, three display ports. It has HDMI. It has everything there. On to the phone? Fully, on no, on the the dock okay. station, port. it has everything on dock station port, so you could do mouse and keyboard. That's why I looked at. It. I'm like, this is insane that you just drop it there. They want you to have this as like a full a full thing. Like this is like, like a full, it, experience. It could be full, full experience. experience. And wow. I, I, that's just insane. So. Time is going so fast, man. I remember when the Engage came out, and I thought it was a shit. And we'd even talk yeah, about real yeah. quick the one feature that's the coolest feature ever <clears> that might change things. They have the touch sensors on the side of the phone. So yeah, they're called triggers. triggers. And they, they, you could go like this, and it, it could detect that you're pressing on That's it. crazy, dude. I'm just like, wow. Like, that's just that design. Other companies might take that to use for other things, like just, you know, maybe swipe to unlock the phone, other things that they might use instead of actually putting buttons down. So I thought that's pretty impressive, too. So that's cool. Right. That's really, really cool. Great news for the phones. All right, continuing on, Microsoft may be purchasing Playground Games, a studio who is well known for its Forza Horizon series. Is this news? Well, yeah, because they don't own them. I mean, I mean, they work <laughs> with us. <laughs> yes, it's. I mean, they like they just make so many games for the Xbox, like just exclusively. They have such a deal; it makes perfect sense, and they need exclusives, as we've talked about. You know. Hopefully the C3 yeah, they'll have a big push in exclusives. Uh, Playground Games doesn't make games for anyone else, so they're already exclusives. <laughs> they do occasionally. Like I think there's something about they have like a second studio now as well, working on games for multi-platform. But I don't know. Like they mostly do well, work I, with Microsoft. I yeah. heard that, that they work exclusively with Microsoft, and you know, Forza is the game that they make, and, and it's you know, it's not my cup of tea, but a lot of people really enjoy that game. And I've heard many people say it is the cream of the crop. It's the premium. And realistically, this makes perfect sense for them to buy them. No, 100%. Yeah, like it's it's probably going to happen. Yeah, mm. But I don't see how that, that, that would change the game for Microsoft. For me, I want Microsoft yeah. to, to, to take a chance and buy something that you wouldn't expect. Right. I want, you know, yeah. If they're going to buy Playground Games, let's see if Playground Games make a different type of game. Oh, they definitely need yeah, a lot of different see. studios. We've we definitely discussed that, how just they need to bring it. With the exclusives, especially at E3 this year. They really they, need to kill it. They better have got like a huge discount because they wasted a lot of money on on this company that the company only makes games for them mostly anyway. Then what was the purpose of it? Like that's the thing. Like I don't understand. And they only like, make one franchise. Are they one afraid that someone else is going to take that company? Like what, what were they afraid of that they... Well, now they just permanently purchased them. So like it's like you're with us now. Like they just probably make more money off the games that they sell. Like I think buying them is a good idea just because they already do so much with them. That's probably I, why. I guess depending on how much money you make off it. Like do you think that the money that they get in is going to cover what they have to pay? Like that's that's what I'm just curious about because that's another thing you have to worry about. You got to get more people to buy the games from that company because sports are... I don't know. I mean, I, I guess. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. We'll, we'll see what happens. But I, I get what you're saying because they'll get more profit coming back, like more kickback. So. Exactly. It just locks Maybe. them in even more. Like it's just they yeah. can do more when they're fully um, owned and you know published under them. Maybe it makes a lot of sense. We kind of touched on this last <clears> week, guys, uh, the way the developers bring in extra revenue for their, for their games. Rockstar Games has announced new special editions for Red Dead Redemption 2. Here we go. <laughs> the special edition costs $80 US and comes with a thoroughbred horse, outfit, additional boosts, talismans, and three weapons free at gunsmiths. The ultimate edition costs $100 US and includes extra content for Red Dead Online, including additional outfits, horses, weapons, and more. If you love temporary boosts, yeah, I, these are for you. I could have sworn someone last week said something about Red Dead going in the direction of online. The same, I wonder who that really? guy was. I don't know who said that. Huh, who who that, would say something like that? He is I feel, the beastly Sherpa. He knows what's happening. I feel like uh, they're milking a cow over here. They're going to milk the shit out of this game. Just like you guys know, I hate to say <laughs> it like really that. are. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm never going to do that again on TV. Don't worry. Okay. Um, but, <laughs> you can say you're playing but, the Switch, man. It's fine. <laughs> but, I don't know. Like, I mean, that's the direction they want to. That's their moneymaker. They realize how much money 
They're making off. I mean, to, to, with, with respect, with respect, GTA. Uh, Grand Theft Auto Online is a huge thing. Yeah, uh, people, tons of people play it. They enjoy they it. They make huge, insane huge money off it. YouTube too. content, yeah. people play it, and, you know, so many different kinds of games. I mean, not games, but uh, videos and ideas that people come up with by playing that game online. So it's to them, it's like a whole new sandbox with mm-hmm. a completely different uh, set of toys, and it's going to be huge. I'm, you know, I play games online. Who knows? If I'll ever try it, I've never played played GTA online. My kids play it, but it's it's a big thing. It's not like it's a small thing. Yeah. And of course, every game that Rockstar makes is a fucking hit. I think uh, uh, GTA Five was the first game ever to make was it a billion dollars in one day? Yeah, a billion or it dollars. Was, yeah, yeah. After the, billion, in the first like three days, it was it was no, quick. it was no, it was a billion dollars in twenty four hours. Jesus, that is crazy. Yeah. Wow. So I mean, in this yeah. game, I don't know if it'll be quite as popular. It's going to be extremely popular, and these announcements, you know, they. The hundred dollar deal for me, that's probably the one I would probably do because it gives you kind of a lock, a key to get into the online ecosystem and, and fuck around in there and see, you know, whether or not it's your cup of tea. You know, I mean, it's probably a good value. And they know, know that GTA Online. I don't know just... if I need a thoroughbred horse because I'm not a racist, <laughs> but you know, thoroughbred horses, outfits, additional boosts, talismans—I don't know what any of this stuff is for. But I'm sure that once you get into the game and you realize just how deep it is, you, you'd wish you paid the yeah. 80 bucks, 100 bucks. I, and they yeah, know I that GTA Online yeah. makes so much money for them. Like, it just makes sense, right? Because mm-hmm. people are going to buy these editions anyways. It's like spend an extra 20 bucks, 40 bucks. Like, people are going to buy them regardless because it's Red Dead Redemption 2, right? Like, people are fine with spending extra money on this game because it's something that everyone wants. So it makes, like, they know they're going to, you know, have sell a lot of these. It makes sense. Here's... Here's the reason why they also need to charge and jack up that price, because now they're going to have to rely on more servers to support both GTA, GTA and this at the same time, just to keep you guys aware of that. Oh, good point. That's going, yeah. that's Do you think that'll be that an issue, though? Absolutely, and they know that. Rockstar that, has that's... so much money, they don't really need it. I don't think it, that'll but... be an issue for them. Yeah, I mean, like they have I mean, unlimited money. You'll see. I'll let you know. know better it, than us. It, but but GTA see. Five didn't really have any issues with online. Not that I've ever heard. Were they playing in the beginning? With they did. Server issues? In the beginning, so, they did. But they, that's why they they collected a lot more money and they they are able to invest in that. Hmm. But now they need to collect more money to invest on this in the back end because you remember, even though they had all that money, they did have a lot of investors for GTA Five. So, so that's they had to support them first. And once they do that, they got the money in the back end from all this this online. But now they have to support more servers for Red Dead, and that's that's going to be. Yeah. Uh, Is that we'll a very see. expensive undertaking, or I mean, <sighs> what do you, what is the issue? Just maintaining servers. Server? Maintain servers is so much money. Like I think that's what people don't understand. Like people get upset with like, oh, why is PlayStation Network? Why Xbox Live? Why do you have to pay for this service? Do you know how hard it is? Like how much money it is to maintain it? Because when you maintain it, not only do you have to have like constant maintenance and stuff you also have to have employees there working on it constantly so they're they're always employed there's always people watching that stuff and like you know people's salaries you're paying for all that like this is how they get that and aside from that they have to make money on the back end otherwise what they're doing is they're doing it for free or they're losing money so like that's what's so hard about like having these online servers that's when even nintendo realized they they can't even do it for free even though they would love to give people online free, they can't do it for free. You have to have money on the back end to support networks. And that's the thing. Like, you have to have money to have employees work on the networks. You also have to have money to build the networks. Yeah. And that's that's the thing. There's so much money that's involved in it. And you're just hoping it doesn't come crashing out. Because the minute someone stops playing it and it gets a rumor that it's not fun anymore and everyone mm. stops playing it, they lose all that money. They never got their money back that they invested yeah. in it. Yeah. So that's why it's really dangerous to do that. But yeah, Steam's like the only main one that's still free. Everything else is uh, going paid. I hope they don't change that. Oh, that would be so frustrating. I want everyone to go in the direction of Steam, but it doesn't seem like that'll ever happen because Wait. people have been bought in now for decades uh, to these kind of network infrastructures. Yeah. But I think Steam's <clears throat> but their Steam, platform. And- Steam gets a kickback from every game though that they sell. So that's why like they they have their money in the back end. That's why they're able to afford that. You, it's way different because they're constantly people are always buying. It's only really spot. But, but Sony like, and Microsoft yeah. do too. They get a kickback from every game they sell online. Yeah, but it's it's very similar. But they they want more money. I mean, the fact remains they you're not getting free games with PlayStation Plus or Xbox games with Gold. 
They're yeah. letting you borrow their games until you stop paying your annual premium. Yeah, right. So they, they do that to keep that extra money coming in. It's just a, a way to sweeten the deal. And they're pretty much doing the same thing that Steam's doing. But, but Steam, but what Steam's doing, though, remember, Steam doesn't have to worry about physical copies. They're all digital. Like, digital copies for them is nothing. There, there's no service for that. You're just providing a host server, and you're giving it to someone. And every time someone downloads, you're getting a portion of it. Like, that is straight-up mafia style. You ain't got to do shit. You're holding, <laughs> someone's, you're holding someone else's stuff. Right, and when someone else wants a share of that, you give it to them, and you're charging them for something you're just holding. That's it's, straight up mafia. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> a good analogy. If, if, if all the meth, the meth dealers in the world knew about Walter White, and they said, "Hey, man, you are getting all this meth out there, this yeah. this crystal blue. I'm going to give you my stuff. Just sell it and, and and just kick me back a portion of it." Oh my! It's business. <laughs> Jeez, it's guys. business. Steam is huge. Everybody goes to Steam for everything. And so, yeah. I mean, it, that's why the, you know, the company has blown up since Steam has been created because it was a genius. <clears throat> so I guess we'll see what happens here. I think uh, this game, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, is going to be a juggernaut. Uh, well, I guess it's going to make a shit ton of money. That's for sure. Whether or not the Red Dead Online will be an issue. But I think it's probably all these years of running GTA 5 Online, I think that they probably kind of got a good grip on how this network infrastructure is supposed to work, and I'm sure yeah. they're going to go into it much smoother than they did before. Oh, yeah. Mo- moving on, Bundy, Bungie and Bundy. <laughs> Bungie and Activision have announced Destiny 2's fall expansion known as Forsaken. It will be a massive addition to the game with a new activity called Gambit, new areas to explore, changes to the game such as random weapon rolls, nine super abilities, and more. Destiny 2's pricing structure is also changing with the introduction of an annual pass, which includes access to Forsaken, plus three additional content updates to come later on. Forsaken plus the annual pass will cost $70 US. Mine. Destiny is the only game I can say that about. I know that Destiny gets a lot of hate, but whenever new DLC comes out, I'm on it. And, and you are too. You guys play. Oh yeah, play 100%. Off. As and, soon as there's content, as soon as, boom. As soon as that yeah. content gets, you know, you, you get what you want. Some people want to stay and find every piece of loot and get every piece of armor. and get. A, I'm not that guy. I got other games I want to play, but I want to experience the story. I want to see the new bosses. If I get enough friends, I want to see a raid, you know. Uh, oh yeah, 100%. But, yeah, this is, it's a no-brainer for me. As long as they continue to do this kind of stuff, but I did come to the realization last week when I was doing the Revolver Live podcast that once they get to the end, all this stuff is for naught. Because we have, none of us have gone back to play Destiny 1, D1 at all. Even mm-hmm. though all that content's there, now it has become redundant and pointless because you know there there is no end game. No matter what you do, you're stuck there. You can't transcend that world and bring it to D2. It's yeah. all for nothing. <clears throat> and so it's kind of the same situation here. At some point, this is going to change. All the shit, the thousands of hours that people go ham on, of course you're having fun with your friends, but at some point it becomes redundant and it disappears and you move on to something else and you never come back to it. And that's, to me, the only sad part. Look, I'm going to, I'm going to put it this way. Why, Here we go, they, Here we go Hector. Why, what you why, got for us? Why, why did they call this game for, Forsaken? Because they abandoned the shit out of everyone that supported this game. <laughs> right? Oh my they God. Left behind and they didn't care because here's the thing right if I, if I want to start this game now because it's in parentheses too you can't even get this DLC unless you purchase Bungie doesn't stuff. listen to their that, player right? base they hate them you, you realize you have to purchase yep. other stuff in order to get this DLC right the expansion right did anyone catch that or no oh expansion so one much, or two yes you have to own how it. much money do I have to spend right now to this day in order to play that expansion Activision's locking you down. Hold yeah. on, hold on. Say that again. I mean, I was reading. I don't listen to myself. Yes. Um, so you have to. I already got the other DLC. I bought the $100 Destiny hey, 2 pack. So you I, did. Yeah. So what if someone else did it? I have to buy all the other oh, shit. Oh, wow. They have to buy the stuff that's available now. Yes. In order to play this for a second. Yes. So that's 100 and how much dollars do I have to spend? Look. 140? Is that 140 no, right now? This will cost 70 for a second plus the annual pass. Will yes. Cost 70. But I'm saying forty dollars just for the expansion. So if I'm just doing just forsaken, I have to spend a hundred dollars from all the other stuff plus the forty. That's one forty just to get into this game. And then hey, if I want the DLC with it, I have to pay extra thirty dollars. So that's a hundred and seventy dollars, right? What did they add to this? Some more story. Great. That's normally called yeah. DLC. Some, some, call some new uh, uh, multiplayer. I mean, 
competitive maps, yeah, some new so, weapons and loot. And the competitive, can, what, they went from four versus four to six v six. They added two more players that they took away to, to begin with. <laughs> like I, Taking away content you, and making you repay for the old stuff. You're trying to add, like, you know, 64 versus 6 or 32 versus... They're trying to add a whole map of people. And they're going back to 6v6. It's been there since... There's nothing I can say. It's nothing anyone can say because he's telling like, the absolute truth. Then they're like, oh, but you know what we're going to do? We're going to give you a chance to get more, any weapon you want. And you can stack, you can put your load out the way you want to. Thank you. Just and make sure you pay money for it, which should be a free feature. Guy. And like, and then they said, we're, 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 we're here for you guys. We're listening to you. We heard everything that you guys we had We love to the community. Yeah, I was like, okay, right? come on. Even though they forsaken us and they didn't give a damn about us. And like now all of a sudden <laughs> people, they want you to come back, you know, will, will you in? We're going to give you all this stuff for a total of $170 if you never played before. We're going to give you $170. That's how much I'm spending on this, on a game. $170 for a game that might be complete this time. It might be a full game this time, everyone. It might be complete. I doubt it. There might be story missing. But, hey, it might be complete this time. You're not getting me on this one. No, sir. I guess it, it all depends on, uh, you know, if you're playing a game that you really like, you know, some people like, you know, the guys I do the other podcast with, they love this game. They think it's the best game ever. I, I like the game quite a bit, but it's even losing, even game. losing with Kate and some random dude who was a complete asshole. Uh, I had a lot of fun losing. I mean, it was just great being in the world and, and trying these activities. And, and for the other people who are more adept at these type of games, you're probably getting a lot more fun out of it than I am because I'm not as adept, but, I guess it all depends. It's relative because I know a guy who spent like hundreds of dollars on a free game. Uh, the game was called uh, Warframe, and uh, this guy. Mm. Some people might say that you know why would you spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on a game? And, and this guy, he was he was forking it over. It was like Warframe was the finest prostitute in the world. He's giving that money here, baby. <laughs> here, baby. And, and <laughs> this guy was having fun playing the game. Hey, Pitbull. And I don't. I don't know how much that game changed, but it's all relative because this particular person, I'm not going to point the elbows because I don't know which direction he is on the screen that you guys are watching, but I think he's right here. Um, <laughs> he, he spent a lot of money on that game and he enjoyed it. So I think some people, they're going to find value in spending that extra 70 bucks. Some people will go in Destiny and go through the same missions, the same strikes, the same nightfalls. They got their friends with them. If me, if the three of us went on Destiny right now and played, the same shit we've already played previously, I'm telling you now, yeah. we'd have a blast because it's us. We would have a great time. And so, you know, people who are always with their friends and they, Heavy Metal Mama in the comments, she's a, she loves Destiny. I understand why. She's a very likable person. Everybody wants to play with her. Everybody wants to be in her company. And it's just a great kind of uh, cauldron of, of personalities when you get into Destiny. And I think that's the thing that makes this game so enjoyable for people. It's not necessarily always the content. Sometimes they get dry and there's droughts, but when there's stuff to do and you got people to do it with, it just adds to the fun. See, <laughs> the thing that sucks is that, like you said, if you have people to do it with, the problem is the yeah. timing of this release. When is this coming out? Okay. When? It's coming out in September, correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah, September with all these other games coming out again, with the Ooh. new Call of Duty that's going to have the the uh, you know the whole Battle Royale system. You're going to have Battlefield coming out. There's all these better games that are actually, you know, 60 frames per second, you know, that you can actually play with more than 12 people total on a map <laughs> that people are going to be hooked on a plane. That's why I don't think you're going to convince too many people to pay $70, $10 more than a new video game for a game that they, they're they continuing to to play, and it's like you, you don't know when they're starting out. So all you're going to attract are people that are currently stuck, not the people that enjoy it too much, or people that are stuck playing it because they thought it was going to be something else, and they're that's all they play. That's the people we're going to get to for this. Everyone else is moving on to other games because there's going to be so many games coming out. And but another, another, tons of stuff, yeah. another thing that you, know, you don't take into account, because I didn't take it into account until I did it at least one other time, is it when, like if you were to start Destiny 2 right now and play through the content that's available, mm -hmm. it would take you a long time. Uh, and by the time you got there, you'd still have to go back and do a few things to get your character, you know, the power level yeah. up high enough. And uh, like for me, once I get there, I'm done. But with Destiny 2, I decided to go back and, and get a Titan and level that Titan up to, yeah. to, to match my Warlock. That 
infinitely increased my playability of the game. It gave it replayability. Right. And I wasn't just doing the same right. thing with the same character. And I could even go back now and do it with you know with another class. And it, but I, I don't feel like doing that shit because I bought the game on PC. And if I do it again, it's going to be on my computer. You know? Correct. But yeah. but some people they do it three times with three different characters. That adds to the replayability. It gives you more options and more you know ways to uh, pursue or um, address confrontations and raids and things like that. So I guess it just depends on the way you, on the way you look at the game. I understand the 60 frames per second argument. I understand that some games are better. I don't think Battlefield's better than Destiny. To be totally honest, I don't care what. I think it's they're like. so different. I don't think you can compare them really. Yeah. I, well, not too nerdy. Just compared them. You didn't say anything. They barely did. I well, said. Yeah, I don't I want said to interrupt. First person. I say like the the style of first person shooters, stuff like that. There's so many coming out where they're better. They're newer games, and there's gonna be sixty dollars. Well, that one's seventy dollars. That's what I meant. If you're gonna do the expansion yeah, with DLC, sure. that's seventy dollars. That's what I meant in that sense. Well, not that hold on. We need to game. clarify. The expansion itself is not seventy dollars. It's, it's forty. But if you want the stuff after with the DLC, correct? Yes. Here, here's a good question. I guess this will this will. Uh, be the defining question for this topic are you buying this dlc mr not too nerdy no like <gasps> absolutely but you not. bought an xbox one x this doesn't make any sense i gotta admit like it's a lot of money that you have to spend for <laughs> on destiny and on these games for them to get good like i wish from the beginning it would be personally for me it would be easier if from the beginning i felt like i was getting my money's worth right like the game was really good I then i'd feel I more did. justified i really but did and see i'm more of a it is frustrating guy. I'm a PvE guy. You me know, too. I, I'll get into the Crucible every now and then, but I like the PvE experience. To me, that's my favorite part of Destiny. And upon completing the game, you know, the very first time I did it with my, with my Warlock, I did the show Revolver. I was talking to those those guys over there, and I told them my sixty dollars felt justified. I felt justified. That's I felt good. like you know, yeah. I you know, I spent plenty of time. I played the game for thirty five hours. You know, getting to where I needed to go and seeing these different places. I felt like my money was well spent. Uh, and so with all these additions. I can't even think of a game that has as much content as Destiny does right now that you could pay sixty dollars for, because it's like an online type of environment. It's PVE PVP, but it's all with your friends. Sure. I, I just can't mm-hmm. think of something that has, is kind of so so expansive. And I think that when they release these big chunks, you know, when they release stuff like the last DLC that came out, it took me what four yeah. hours to complete. To me, that's a worthwhile buy. You know, See, uh, it, it's not. It shouldn't be free. I think if they're what? doing something that's quality and they're adding new dynamics and new places and new enemies and new huge bosses, uh, I think that that stuff, if you really enjoy the game, it should be something you pay for. How, luckily for me, I bought the deluxe edition, so I already paid for it. But I think that you know the game as it is now shouldn't cost less than $100 or more because there's so much stuff that's going on in it. And so you just pay for it incrementally as yeah, you add to it. Maybe. I don't think it's ever going to be a perfect game. But for all the content you have right now, if you never played Destiny 2, and the content that is available right now, they say it's 100 bucks. It'll last you for all these hours. There's all these places you can go. There's all these raids you can do. Uh, we'd all happily pay for it if we'd never done it before. So sure. it just takes time for it to be that big. But uh, you know, I'm not hating on Destiny. I, sometimes it gets boring as hell. Sometimes I hate listening to uh, you know my, my good friends, Briar and Wilson, talk about it when I'm like not in the mood. <laughs> it's but, like, uh, come on, other games. Yeah, but you know, there's reasons to love it. And, and I think yeah. that it will continue to be successful. It's, you know, oh, 100 percent. It's two just games. Sorry, Division two, though. No, Division two, though. Like you don't know about what Division mm-hmm. two is gonna look like. You don't know about what you're right. Going to come out to be like, which they might be announcing right now. I don't know. <laughs> but the point is, oh, there's early games. You don't know what they're gonna be like, and we're relying on Destiny two, which we see it over and over again. That it's the same BS. So that's the only reason why I'm like, you can't. I can't get invested in something like that. And like, and now that they sold the company, in case you guys didn't know. They they partnered up with another Chinese company, or whatever, I forget yeah, what it is, yeah. for 150 million. So like that whole thing that that's going on, like I don't even and mark my words right now. Well, like, that's completely you're gonna hear separate from what's. You're gonna hear this first. I see Bungie completely dumping this, dumping Destiny. I don't think they're gonna. I don't think Destiny's gonna disappear. I think Destiny's gonna be no longer with Bungie. I think Bungie's gonna dump that off. How would they do that though? Because they're in a 10 year contract with Activision. Like they just cancel no, the contract the game, or something? The game is ten year contract. They currently can dump that off to another studio. That's what I was looking into that before. They can hmm. definitely dump that off to another studio. The game itself has to stay with Activision. Okay. Yeah, so that's what I, I say. I think I would not doubt that because they have half their studio working with other China. You heard that, right? That it's yeah. half the studio working on a different game now, which is gonna be like a multi 
like MMO style or something. I forgot what it was. It's going to be like yeah. a huge thing Interesting that they're news. doing there. Yeah. So. Yeah. But for me, though, you, you know, you mentioned uh, the division, you mentioned yeah. uh, Anthem, right? And, and those are great points. And they probably will, on some level, be better than Destiny. I think the Division 2 has a lot of potential. I thought it had a lot of potential originally, uh, but they just missed the mark. And I think that they're probably uh, reloading the gun and taking a second yeah. shot. Yeah. I think it'll, it'll definitely be better. But when, when we took like the Division and, and Destiny 1, Destiny beat it. It was a better game overall. Right. And, and right. that's why people stuck with Destiny 2. So until the division comes out, until Anthem, we find out more about what Anthem is, Destiny is still going to be the, the leader in this particular space, especially on consoles. And, you know, time will tell. I'm probably going to end up getting all the games because I love video games. Uh, but, you know, hopefully the division and even Anthem can outdo Destiny in a lot of these aspects. If yeah. they can, Destiny, it'll, it'll be like the Nintendo, Xbox, and Microsoft. Mm -hmm. I mean, Xbox and uh, PlayStation. Xbox, Microsoft. Uh, the way they have to compete with one another. You know, one company d creates an awesome game, another one has to compete with that. The hardware is constantly improving. Uh, and so when Destiny sees viable competition, like uh, the Division 2 or Anthem doing something that they haven't thought of yet, or doing something they have, but doing it uh, infinitely better, it's going to make Destiny, they're going to say, okay, in order for to keep our mind share, to keep our, our fans excited, you know, they had to go to Anthem and get something they've been asking us for. They had to go to the division sure. two to get something they've been asking us for. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to have to really, really step our game up and give these people what they really want. So oh yeah, they're getting competition. It's going to be interesting to see what Anthem looks like. So yeah, how that compares. Next bit of news: be big. a new a new Diablo game is in the works at Blizzard Entertainment, thanks to a job listing sent out by the company this week, asking to hire a new talent for the next Diablo project. Heck yeah. That's gonna be go. That's gonna be dope. Diablo three. I haven't, is I haven't played a Diablo game yet. Mm, Diablo three is really good. I know at first people were like, "Oh, it kind of launched rough on PC and stuff." That game I'm got really, of fire. really good though. No, that is a great game. And uh, Diablo four, that's gonna be really cool. That's gonna be awesome. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward I to that. Played, I, I know it's a loot based um, dungeon yeah. slasher. Yeah. Uh, kind of similar to uh, uh, what was it? Uh, Gauntlets. Was it Gauntlet years ago? Not too nerdy. The game we used yeah. to play. Yeah. I think it's similar. To yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's probably something I could really get into. I could probably really get into it with my girl, too. Just sitting here grinding together on the 50-inch and the 60-inch 4Ks. We, we should have probably been getting down for years. But everything else came and distracted us. Is it going to work at launch? Like you said, Robbie, is it going to be Erico 1016? Oh, no. Erico 1016 <laughs> some of them. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, oh, God. I'm yeah. like, look, like seriously, Erico two, Have Erico a controversial ten, auction oh, house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I was so pissed off with that shit. Like, it, it was, I, I got that at launch and it just didn't work. And yeah, later, it, I think it got better once it went to the uh, PS4, right? Once they brought, or it was PS4, or PS3, they did it first. It was Last it. gen, and then it came to current gen, like within six months. When they did that, at least you could play like friends better. It was a, lot, it was a better launch. It just that when it came out for the PC, man, it just. I don't know how you screwed up that bad. They couldn't connect because, mm -hmm. oh, they had, like, the online check. That's why. They they try to, to do something where it was... DRM? It kind of was, or, yeah, the DRM that you had to check online. Yeah, that But yet was broken. the servers couldn't connect. It was broken. So you had a game that you purchased that you couldn't connect online and you couldn't go inside a game that you purchased. Meanwhile, I specifically remember all these hackers and everyone that bootlegged the game were in the game playing it while people that paid for the game <laughs> couldn't go into the game for like three days. <laughs> I used to hate that, man. Wow, that's 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 horrible. Uh, I mean, I guess, you know, I know Diablo 3 did really well, and I know that they made 3 because people really liked it. So I'm looking forward to seeing. Question, that's always a top-down view as well, right? Yes, it, and I mean, as long as Diablo 4 works, exactly. Like, Diablo 3 turned out to be a great game in the end. It's just, it yeah. work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. True, true. Okay, so this is exciting. Valve will now allow anything to release on Steam's store page as long as it's not, quote, illegal or trolling. So no AIDS simulator, no ISIS simulator, none of that stuff. Nothing yeah. like that. Uh, uh. Yeah, <laughs> I, I heard that in the news. There was a company creating games, uh, KKK <laughs> simulator, simulator and things yeah. like that, right? <laughs> Wow. How much time and, and spare money do you have on your hands when you're doing shit like that? Yeah, you know what? I don't even have a problem with games like that. It's like, whatever. If someone wants to make a yeah. game like that, whatever. Like, I'm just, like, I'm not going to get upset over it. It's just so dumb. Like, who cares? I don't know. But obviously that stuff is pretty stupid. Yeah. The only trolls I like were the treasure trolls from the 1990s that had the gems in their belly button. Believe it or not, 
I'm a super hetero male that used to collect them. Next bit of news. Oh my God. Days gone. Wait, used to? <laughs> Hold on. Nice yeah. You sure about that? <laughs> Days Gone will release on February 22nd, 2019, exclusively on the Ouya. No, I'm just kidding. Hold on, on basically. Don't, don't do PlayStation fans dirty like that. Come on. Oh, my God. My heart. <laughs> Days Gone will release wow, exclusively on February 22nd, 2019 yeah. on uh, the PS4. Yeah. Uh, you guys think that's a good time for this thing to release? I was hoping to be seen uh, before the end of the year. Honestly, but yes, it, because, like, you know, Last of Us Part 2 is probably going to be May, June of next year or something, so they want to get it out of that way. Like, they don't want to have... You think it's going to come out soon? Oh, yeah. Within a year or so. I'd say that game's out within a year. I think a three-year development after Uncharted 4, I think it would be good. But, yeah, I mean, we know that for Sony's conference, for E3, like, they're showing Death Stranding, Spider-Man, Last of Us Part 2, Ghost of Tsushima. Like, those are their big four titles, and so they're not... Going to talk about this game at E3. Maybe they're saving it for Gamescom or something like that. Or maybe later on they'll show more of it. But yeah, I think February just gets it out of the way of other exclusives they probably screw, have. Screw the release date. You know, I know there's a new trailer. I saw it when I was scrolling through my YouTube feed. Have you guys seen the trailer? Of course you have. Yeah. What do you guys think about the game? Is this something that you, you're interested in? People are... I think it's just so overshadowed by Last of Us Part Two, but honestly, I like a lot of the stuff in it. I think it's cool with like the crafting and like the motorcycle and stuff, and like it's it's the zombies and stuff too are different from Last of Us. Like it's different. I saw a lot. Enough. I saw a lot of the Last of Us uh, inspiration in, in in the original trailer. Yeah, but crafting for me, it's it's different cocktails. enough where I'm like I'm excited for both. You know what I mean? Like obviously, I think Last of Us I'm more excited for because the first one was an amazing game, but. I don't know if Days Gone will be as good, but it, like it looks cool. Like you yeah. know what I mean. Like it looks like a really great game, and that's what I care about. Is is it a fun game to play? Uh, does it doesn't make sense. And yeah, that hopefully that February release date is good for this game. So. I'm worried though about the game because like every every trailer I've seen, everything when there's a lot of zombies on the screen, and yes, they actually call them zombies. Um, well, and all the zombies on the screen. Don't like, they call them like freakers like or just... something? I don't think they call them zombies. I thought they said it was the first game that actually called them zombies. No, they're called like freakers. Like they don't call them zombies. Are they? Yeah. That's I, I'd say who the hell you're the freak. They're zombies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> freakers. No, they, they do. You sure you didn't call that zombie a freak? Hey, you're freaky. No. Anyway, um, so <laughs> <laughs> like I I don't understand. Like I, all right, so we know Dead Rising Four and stuff like that. Like you saw mm. how glitchy it was and like how the the frame rates drop when there's so many that's what i'm worried screen. about the frame rate because there's a I lot saw, of uh, freakers on this on game the trailer it looked like it was a little glitchy and the frame rate dropped in the trailer but like it could have been the trailer itself i don't know like and that's what i'm worried about I'm like man how's it gonna act when like there's all those zombies on screen doing different motions and moving how's it going to react and like Games like that could be it could be like game breaking when you're you're running and you're trying to do a quick move and then it freezes. Yeah, like, it, it, that would be annoying, you know. Like that's why I'm kind of curious because they, they're focusing all this high resolution and HDR and all this stuff. And like, I'm looking at my like, get your frame rate under control. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. So I don't know. That's it, it, thing it, you, you gotta you gotta hit a delicate balance because uh, Microsoft is hitting everything on the hardware front. They're not really. Yeah. Con mm. They're more concerned with power. And Sony, they've been you know trying to compete in that area, you know, with the, the PS4 Pro uh, and uh, with HDR and, and kind of finding a middle ground as far as res resolution goes and frame rate. But uh, like what they did with Rise of the Tomb Raider, I think they should always have a performance mode and they should always have a graphics mode. Uh, God of War, perfect example. They should do those in like every game that's coming out now to give the, the player the, the ability or the power, the authority to change the way the game is playing for them. Some people think graphics is more important than frame rate. To those people, you're wrong. Uh, and some people think that <laughs> you're wrong. It's true, and, and some people think that frame rate is, uh, you know, paramount over everything. And to me, that's probably the best way to go if you want a more seamless kind of experience. So yeah. uh, hopefully they'll integrate that. It seems like more and more games are starting to at least look in that direction. And uh, since this game has been in development and it's been, you know, for so long, and it's so heavy as far as the, the amount of NPCs and, and enemies on the screen. It seems like a no-brainer they would implement some way for you maybe to on a PS4 Pro to get the resolution to 1080p and and allow you know a higher frame rate so that GPU can you know help things move more smoothly. Yeah, high frame rate mode would be nice for that game. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see it. All right, Hitman 2 is officially uh, was officially announced uh, by IO Interactive and is coming later this year on November 13th. Are you guys excited for this? I've actually never played the last Hitman game. I've heard really good I things about it. I played 30 minutes of it, man. It was the best. Th no, it wasn't. I, I, I did 30 minutes. <laughs> um, Damn. It, it's, it's a lot. Uh, and this is what's going on now. And I'm sure a lot of people who are older 
and even younger, Robbie, because you have a lot more video games than probably any of your contemporaries. I know, being 16 and all, you know, it's tough. Yeah, no. yeah you turned 16? Um, I just did, yes. Thank you. Yeah, uh, there's so many video games, and, you know, I ended up selling a whole lot of video games last year. I sold, like, 60 or 70 video game discs because mm-hmm. they were sitting around collecting dust. And uh, this game was one of them, the Hitman game. But I did yeah. play it for, like, 30 or 40 minutes, and I was mm-hmm. like, wow, this is really intriguing. But let me get back to this. It might have been Horizon Zero Dawn. Let me get back to this. And so, uh, you know, if I get more time, I'd like to delve into it. It's just, it seems like even as, as you get older, if they say time flies when you're having fun. When you get older, you don't have to have fun anymore. It just flies. So, you just uh, get old without having fun? Yeah. <laughs> the more you smile, you try to make it slow down, but then you look at the clock, it's still gone. It's, it's shitty. So, I mean, I, of course, we heard that uh, the Hitman developer, I.O., they uh, were kind of a free agent. They left Square. Right. Uh, and so people were kind of wondering what's going to happen with the franchise. Obviously, the origi- the, the first game, yeah. uh, which is episodic, they uh, they were able to get enough fan fanfare to push forward with this. So this, in that way, I'll, I'll support them. I'd like to see them you know, be independent, hold yeah. on to their IP, and do something for themselves. So uh, I, I think I just, I just agreed I'm going to buy this game to support the developer because uh, they're out there in the waters all by themselves swimming with the big sharks and uh, they need some food from the beast. Oh yeah. I'm just happy it's not episodic though. Like you said, like that's, that's a big thing for me that it's not episodic now. It's like a real full game. So that's cool. Right. Oh, exciting news for people who like explosions. <laughs> just cause four has leaked on the steam store page just ahead of its likely announcement at E3. You guys yeah. yeah, pretty right. obvious it's coming. I mean, after that Walmart. Hopefully, Canada it leaked. runs better though, though, uh, Ravi. Yeah. Because True. on PS4, it didn't run that well. Uh, it's kind of skippy, you know. It looked like somebody skipping in the playground. Yeah, and the fact that like this game was on the Steam store page, come on, like it's a real game. Like after Walmart Canada leaked it too, like yeah. it's like how much more confirmation do we need? You know. You know, if Walmart Canada leaked it. They never lie in Canada. I'm surprised. Yeah, we're no honest. We're just nice. Earlier, though. Exactly. They've been on the job boards for the longest time. The studio's been looking for more developers and stuff like that. They may even mention the, the style that they're looking for, which completely describes Just Cause 4. Mm-hmm. And it's funny, like, they have another one that they're mentioning, which describes the other game that they're going to release, because they're releasing two different games. Yeah, so, they just like, announced another they, game. What was it called? Like, they just announced remember. that. I don't remember what it was the, called. The thing is, the funny thing is, like, it, on the job board, they pretty much explain the character and everything, how they need it to be done. I just thought that's mm-hmm. funny that people just announce it now as, like, oh, this might be coming. I'm like, man, they've been asking for this for, like, the last three <laughs> years or two years for yeah. getting more people on the job board. So I thought that was funny. Oh, uh, breaking news. EA just released uh, Unravel 2. Really? That's it's, cool. It's out, it's nice. out now. It is? Wait, it's out now. Breaking news from Beastly Thoughts Live. Uh, Unravel 2 is out now, so if you enjoyed the first game, you like to be a little ball of yarn. With oh, Unravel was horns. a good game. That's awesome. That's really cool news. Damn. Yeah, so uh, that's out now, and I just figured I'd look at the news and break that for Thank you, Beastly. Yeah, that's to. awesome. Yes. Yeah, my, my girls really, really like that game, so uh, that might be exciting. Go waste a little bit of money there. But I, I, waste? I digress. I Excuse me? Hey man, when you, a good, when this you gonna be a good games, game. When you buy, when you have five kids, buying dinner is a waste of money. <laughs> okay, fine. Just hey. don't let your kids eat then, Beastly. See how that goes. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying. Don't feed them for like a couple weeks. See how. Tell me how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so that's the just cause information, and of course, uh, uh, unravel. But the last bit of news for t- this episode of Beastly Thoughts Revival: Microsoft has officially. De- <laughs> Oh, here Microsoft. we go. It's like, what news is this? Oh, right. Right, I, this one. <laughs> Microsoft has officially delayed, delayed, delayed Crackdown 3 till February 2019. Uh, more will be talked about with the game at E3, at the Microsoft E3 press conference. Oh, it's so awkward that they're going to this... address it, too. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Who's excited for Crackdown? Me, me, me. Uh, you got to wait till next year. Yeah, delayed again. It's like, oh, okay. Jeez. Well, look, let me just say this, okay? I don't like to see the delays. I don't like this to see game's the not coming out. This game's getting canceled. It's gone. No, they've, they've done too. They've wasted way too much money in development. This game is definitely coming out. But uh, I don't like to see it. It's always a bad, bad news for people who are excited about you know games coming to a console. But I'd rather a game come out properly the first time than come out broken and jacked up, and then they have to go 
patch it eight times in the first three days. And, 100%. You know, I get so tired. I don't know about you I'd guys, but I'm tired be... of games launching nowadays and just not working out of the gate. Like, I really am getting more and more fed up with that as time goes on. Like, the more that comes out, it's just like, come on. Like, you pay for a product and you expect it to work. You know what I mean? Like, for anything else, that that's crazy. Oh, more, more EA news. EA... Sorry, Robbie, I saw this. <laughs> no, it's okay. EA, EA has announced Star Wars... Jedi Fallen Order. Yep. Yeah, so I don't know anything more than that because I haven't read the actual article. There, there's supposed to be another studio. There's new in-game footage of, Fall, of Anthem. Oh my goodness. Is that hmm, is that Star Wars game? That's is that Respawn's game though? If it is, I'm excited. That could be Bioware yeah, think, or Respawn. I, I feel think, like I think that's the Respawn one. I think it that says, was the Respawn one. It says, today at California's Electronic Entertainment Expo, Electronic Arts announced a new Star Wars game from Respawn. The creators yeah. of Titanfall and Titanfall 2. Nice. CEO Vince, cool. I'm glad their game was CEO announced. CEO Vince Ampella was sitting in a crowd and got to casually reveal the new title his studio is working on called Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. While there was no footage, Zampella was able to disclose some light details of the game. The game will be set in the years between the cinematic episodes 3 and and uh, four. While the title implies something after the Jedi Massacre of Order 66, Zampella said it would be during the dark times mm -hmm. that natural and that naturally players will pick up a lightsaber during the game. So cool, yeah. Respawn's an awesome dev. I'm excited for them to do something cool and different Other with the than Star big Wars ass license. Robots. Exactly. No, it's cool whenever a developer that's a really good, talented team branches out, does something different. I love that. You know, and Star Wars is obviously awesome. So. Yes, but, it is. Yeah. I have two two lightsabers on my wall. I showed one to my uncle yeah. today, and I think he pissed himself. <laughs> about crack, like about Crackdown nice. Three, like, yeah, what? I don't know, man. Like, I have a feeling too, Robbie, that they're this game's gonna get canceled. I know you said they invested really too much. That? I agree with they, that. They, yeah. they invested, I think so. They invested how much money in Fable, well, Fable Legends or whatever, and it never came to fruition. You know how long that was in development for? Do you know how much money they spent on that? Yeah. And it came out. And it's, it's just there. The reason why is this, right? This whole game was built. From the ground up, if you remember years ago when they announced Crackdown 3, which I know it's hard to remember, could they announce it how many years ago? Was it like 2016 E3 or 2015 E3? No, that was like 2014. That was even I say when they, when they showed footage, like the first footage was like oh, 2015, right? Two, yeah, 2015 yeah. I believe was the year. And then, so what they had was the destruction was the big thing, right? Yeah, the, the cloud, the cloud and all that. Remember cloud. that? Yeah, yeah. And now they are like, wait, we can't do this because if, if it doesn't work for people, we're going to have to make a, a real, like, destruction in-game. I think the fact that they have to mm. redesign Good everything, point. screwing everything up for them, and it looks like crap. Because they're realizing that now, like, every it, that screws up everything. The polygon system, like, the way you design the game, like, it messes up everything. You have to go from what you're based off of and switch the base, and now you have to start from scratch pretty much. It's a disaster, and like I don't know if they could really fix it without it being broken. You know what I mean? Like I, that's the thing. Like, are they gonna be like, do we release this broken, or do we not? And that's the thing. Do you want them to be patched, or do you just want rather them cancel at this point? Like, I don't know. Yeah, Ooh. I don't know what they're gonna do because I think well, that I, I think that I think they should uh, patch it and fix the game because you know, depending on the cloud, depending on new technology, sounds fancy, but as you said. If something were to be an issue as far as your internet goes, you got a game that doesn't work. Yeah. So the, the fundamental idea should have been creating the game first and then adding the extra features that mm -hmm. wouldn't break the game if they weren't available. Okay. And, and the main reason add, I add don't... add cloud features Sorry. that aren't going to destroy the game and stop it from running properly. If an explosion goes off in a building and your internet's cut off... Uh, and the building just sits there. You're like, I'm sorry, my cloud's not working. Yeah, that's going to be awkward. Oh, my God. If it's always online and stuff, that's going to be weird. Or if it just stops working. But, yeah, I mean, I don't, know. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like the main reason that they wouldn't want to cancel this game, like, say they just get it out and whatever, it's it's decent, you know, say it's a good game, um, is just that because they've already canceled Fable Legends and Scalebound and they're having troubles with their first party. Like, it just looks bad if they cancel something else, you know what I mean? Because we're all really wanting them to come out with exclusives and if they cancel something else like that just looks bad after all the hey, struggles they've had you gotta look you can't be a glass half empty kind of guy you gotta be a, a glass half full kind of guy i mean after all microsoft just bought playground games i mean if it's the best well yeah <laughs> and if it's the best decision to do to cancel the game by all means but then again if you do release it you can make some of that money back but if the development goes on and then it never ended up coming out, then you just spend more money, right, on that development time. So, I mean, 
I don't know. Like, I think it's likely it could be canceled. I agree with Hector. I think it's it's very uh, possible. Here, here's the problem. It right? might come like, out one day, at... but I don't know. Like, it's just, I don't know. I'm looking right now. I'm trying to see what the... Uh... So, like, all right. So, Sea Thieves came out. Sea Thieves is, like, a 69 on Metacritic, right? What 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 Good game number. had they had that actually... Is, like, all right. And they're consistent because State of Decay 2 is a 68 in a Metacritic. What have they had consistent that's actually a good, a good game? You know what I mean? Like, Not what much. have they had? Yeah. That's the thing. Like, they have nothing. So even if they release this game, are they going to release it and it's going to be crap again? Like, that, that's the thing. What do they want to release? Crap games or do they want to actually release games that are going to be good? Right. And even if it's at its best... How good do you think Crackdown Three is going to be? Because I, that's that's still it didn't look that great. At its best, it'll be like a game. good game. Like you know what I mean? It's never going to be an amazing game. I think that's I don't, the yeah. thing. Like I I don't know like what 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 they're going for anymore. What's the next big game for them? Like that's the thing. This E3 is going to be so huge for the Xbox One because it makes them breaks them. Like this this is it. If you yeah, don't show point. any more games at all. The, your console is going to completely wither away and the Switch is going to take over and surpass you, which they're going to anyway. Yeah. Um, they're going to surpass you and that's it. People are going to be focusing on the Switch or PS4. If you want like a normal, realistic like type of game, stuff, you're going to go to mm-hmm. PS4. If you want games that are like fun and like on the portable, go style yeah. games, the portables, you go on the Switch. And that's all it's going to be from now on. It, they're people going to start forgetting about the Xbox for at least this generation until they get a new console. And that's it. Like it, it sucks. I mean, is Halo going to save them? Is Gears going to save them? Because that's all. I'm sure they're going to show Halo at E3. You know, I mean, they're going to show the new yeah. Halo at E3. I bet that'll then, be teased. And obviously, we know Gears of War Five is inevitable because again, it, the Walmart leaks. So <laughs> Walmart's I, just leaking E3. Man. Which one's coming out first, yeah. though? Gears of War. I, 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 Halo? Think, I think I think Halo is going to come first. Uh, Gears of War came last. I think they're both coming next year, fall 2019. Well, uh, speaking of 2019. All right, Anthem gets a February 2019 release date. Ooh, that's, so that, that's interesting. That's, okay, that's exciting. And this is all coming from E3 Battle. I mean, uh, EA's E3 uh, conference right now. Battlefield 5 confirmed to have a battle royale mode to compete against Black Ops 4. There you go. Which... Yeah, not surprising, but we'll see. I mean, that game makes all that game could be really cool for battle royale, obviously, because it's just got such a big player count already. Like that could be really dope. I believe uh, I confirmed that in my predictions, E3 predictions. I said that Battlefield 5 will have a Battle Royale mode. I mean, okay, Hector, get off there. your high horse. <laughs> <laughs> there you, you know, go. Like, you, got the, five, you got the brownie five, points. There you go. Is, you don't want him to get off that horse. He'd fall to his death. <laughs> it's like, look at me. <laughs> Baller stuff. The horse is 20 feet tall. You, you guys saw me bust my ass off a rock, okay? A horse is going to kill me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Great point. Oh, man. Sounds like uh, EA's conference was okay. Uh, you know, uh, this is kind of stuff we already knew. Of course, what about sports news? I need my FIFA. They say that Madden, uh, Madden's latest trailer promises greater realism for video game football. That sounds like every, every game ever. Sounds like what I heard in 93. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like So, I mean, yeah, it's more realistic. Yeah, I mean, you can see the booger mm. fall out of his nose when he gets tackled. Uh, it's, it's football. Enjoy yourself, people. Enjoy yourself. Yeah, and uh, also, guys, you know, I want to quickly run down uh, E3 conference schedule as well, just so everyone knows. So, obviously, yes. EA is today. It's going on right now. Uh, tomorrow is Sunday. Tomorrow, the big two are Microsoft and Bethesda. Microsoft is going to be at 1 p.m. Pacific time or 4 p.m. Eastern. Bethesda's showing will be 6.30 p.m. Pacific time or 9.30 Eastern, so that's pretty late for uh, people like Beastly in the East. I'm sorry, Beastly. <laughs> I got vacation days. Hey, there you go. And then uh, Sunday, of course, or no, Monday, Monday. sorry, is uh, a big day as well. Obviously, we got uh, Square Enix. We got PC Gaming, which is kind of shitty usually. But uh, Ubisoft, obviously, will have a lot to show. And then, of course, the big one that everyone loves usually and is the most anticipated one to close kind of the show is Sony, of course. Uh, They're going to have a lot to show. And then the next morning, early in the morning, we're going to have Nintendo. So, yeah, I mean, we are... You didn't mention Microsoft. Yeah. No, I didn't. When? My when? Microsoft tomorrow. Tomorrow, 1 p.m. Pacific time, 4 p.m. Eastern. Oh, so they don't even want to be in the same day as PlayStation anymore. Mm. Well, they never really were, or were they? They probably yes, they were. were. They always, always have the been. morning. They They're always first, in the morning. Yeah. You guys are right, actually. Yeah, there was wow, a time when all four would go. You know what? We don't want. We don't want to fuck with them. 
You know what? Yeah, I do remember E3 is That's where it would be like girly. Microsoft, EA, Ubisoft, Sony in one day. Like, that was insane. Now it's like split into kind of two different days, which I kind of like because it's like it, that excitement extends. But yeah, no, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. And holy shit, this is going to be exciting. This is going to be super exciting news. I can't wait. You know, I'm going to be watching it. I'm going to have some late days at work. But it's all worth it for the, the, the things that we're passionate about. I'd like to thank everybody for checking us out today on PC Thoughts Live. This is episode... Are we in episode three? Or three. Three. three, baby. Episode three, because we're back. You know, we're back like Randolph and Mortimer. Watch Trading Places, by the way. You can follow me on Twitter at Beastly Gamer Max. Follow Not Too Nerdy at Not Too Nerdy. We love our heck. And of course, you guys know about the grandioso Rob is Call, which I like to say is Rob is cool. Because he is. Am I we cool? You hey, thank you. Yes. Man. Appreciate it. <laughs> Am I cool enough for you? Uh, also, guys, for everyone watching the stream, I appreciate you coming out. Thank you so much uh, as well. I will be streaming every single press conference, basically, uh, starting with Microsoft tomorrow, of course. It is going to be incredibly exciting, uh, both on Twitch and Mixer, because obviously I stream on both now. So follow me on both if you don't want to miss any of that. And yeah, subscribe to these guys on YouTube. They are awesome. They will be posting the show up on both their channels, as always. All My friends are awesome. But yeah, everyone, E3 is here. Uh, it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun over the next couple days, and we can't wait to discuss everything that happens. Ooh, next week, and, next yeah. Saturday is going to be, uh, let me see, what, what can we call next Saturday? Can it be Crunk Saturday? Because uh, we're going to be crunk like little John in this bitch. There's going to be so much news to talk about. We might have to do, you know, I'm serious. We might have to start the show at 1 and just go until 4. We might need an extra hour. I'll talk to you guys about it. I'm totally cool with that, man. We can go uh, I'm out. super. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited about talking about some of these revelations. I'm going to try to keep up with it as much as I can. You know, I got a, my uncle here from out of town. Shout out to Uncle Ed. I hope he didn't walk to Fayetteville. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm looking forward to talking to you guys about that. So we'll be uh, in touch on Twitter. If you guys see anything interesting, please uh, tweet it to uh, Beastly Thoughts Live. And that way we'll all get that information disseminated. And, of course, to all the fans, thank you guys so much. Everyone, that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching it, guys. We will be back again, I believe, next Saturday. We should be live uh, at around the same time. So, everyone, have a wonderful rest of your day. And uh, we will see you all on the next BC Thought Show. Take care, everyone, and we are signing off. Bye-bye.